feel free to download the full podcast on all major streaming sites, including iTunes, Apple Music and Spotify. Also, check out the KRN store and grab yourself the latest KRN merchandise and accessories using the keyword KRN10 for 10% discount on all purchases. Thanks for listening and enjoy the interview. See, when, when the court case, when, when there was moving us about in, in Holland, because of, of the lives that they're here, everywhere I got moved was by helicopter. We never seen the sun for, well, nearly five years. It was a special branch UK in a private Royal Navy jet. I was flown from the, the prison in, uh, in Holland to the airport, straight into a private jet with the Scotland Yard and taken to, I think it was High Down Prison. But when I got there, there was only four prisoners in there. Me, Kenny Noy, Mickey Steele. He was adamant he had nothing to do with it. So no, he's not got on prison. He's never had hundreds of millions. It's just all fantasy fiction figures that learn something. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over again. And life runs out pretty quickly. I'm 62 now. Mm. No, there's, not, there's not many years left. Very few make it to be a millionaire. Overnight. I mean very few. And the ones that do, by the time you get to that level, perhaps hundreds of police looking after you, looking to try and catch you. Yeah, what sort of life is it? What sort of life is it? It's terrible. Original paintings, uh, well, once I got back to England, that was, I spent six months on some of them, you know, detail, because you can just sit there and get really anal with it. You've got nothing else to do. Yeah, and you know with the, the pictures that you're doing in the Dutch Channel, were you able to sell them out or send them? Uh, sell, sell them all. Sell them, sell them all, yeah. My collection's massive, I've kept them all. I've kept every painting I ever did in Holland. I kept, collect uh, all the paintings that I'd done in England. I was able to send them out to my family. Mm. And on the day the day I got released, I went out with about two trolleys full of paintings. Mm. And so, talk to me about when you so you were in the Cat Eight Triple Cat Eight the whole time in Holland, then right up until yeah. five well, years. Well, the first couple of months was in that grave, obviously. And then, yeah. and then no, we got about eight months where it got closed down. Yes. Uh, Cole was the king of the gypsies. Yes. He got it closed down. Really? Cost him a couple of million. How did he manage to do that? Well, right? he, he appealed uh, in uh, inhumane treatment. They called it. Because what, what the system was there, even though it was cameraed everywhere, and they closed it down in, uh, how many of the moves? Came back in, I think it's so 2000. Yes. Must have closed it down. And, and so it, he, he took it all the way to the European court and they closed it on inhumane treatment. Uh, because what they used to do every 30 minutes, he'd come to the shut the door, open it, he would shine a torch in, I'll turn the light on, mm. all the way through the night, seven days a week, never missed. And then some of them would be really quiet, you could hear, you never hear them. Some of them would have nice shoes on like we've got on quiet. Some would have proper boots on and they'd open the latch and they'd slam it. And uh, he, he took a look. Torturous, yeah, that's what it was. And so whatever happened to that cobra, the king of the gypsies, was he a Dutch fellow? Dutch yeah, he finished his sentence. Yeah. Just did his jail and... I've not seen or heard of him since. Mm, hopefully he got away yeah, from but he, he got, uh, there, there was part of the, I remember at one point, he got over a million guilders sent to his account from the, from the Germans, uh, reparation, from, the, from war crimes. You know, the, in his account, he used, to, he used to tease the screws with it all the time. But he used to buy his, spend, he just used to send us a list and say, just buy what you want, put it on there. It was, uh, Sounds like quite a character. Yeah, he was, yeah. Mm. yeah. And, um, so you end up uh, coming to the end of your time out there with five years and then due to get sent back. How does that process work then? Was it as soon as the end of the five years you got was it were you in a extradition prison after the yeah. Dutch one and then Yeah, but we we see when when the court case when, when they was moving us about in, in Holland, because of, of the lies that they heard, everywhere I got moved was by helicopter. We'd come out of the cell. Oh my god. So the the morning of being moved to to, to court was that they, they come, the arrest artillery teams come into the prison, into the triple cat A side, with guns, everything. And the whole of the other prison shut down, the, the main prison gets shut down as well. And they come in and then they take, take, take you to the next cell, 
because it was always one cell with a person in it, empty cell, another person. You never put somebody next door to each other yeah. on, on, on the wings. Mm. And uh, But that, that jail is also available to watch on Dutch television. So if you, if you want to watch it, it's on uh, New Vosseveld prison. You can see, they take you around the prison where we was. We'll get some clips up on Yeah. As we, as we talk I'll, about I'll send you the, the, one of the links to it. Uh, and, and so talk to me about how, um, what stage you end up bumping into Curtis during the, the Holland uh, sentence? Yeah, it was just uh, just in uh, in this new Vosseveld vault, and they, they had the uh, cages outside for walking. So when, when you used to go on exercise, which was 30 minutes, uh, you used to put the cuffs on, and uh, take you through three sets of doors, through another three sets, take you outside into the, the first three sets of doors, and then put you in a cage. and. Uh, over the other side was dentists and things like that. But you had to, everywhere you went, it was a strip search. And Curtis was on the on the yard, and I'd been to the I think I'd been to the dentist. And as as we walked out like that, he was there. We had a couple of words, and I got dragged off, and he everybody started running off. The alarm went off, and he wasn't happy about it. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't. He didn't have a chance to have any deep conversation. No, so. no deep conversation. Just how, how are you doing? How's it going? Yeah, all right. Because yeah. um, I've read all there is to read about Curtis and they're saying that he was still controlling all these drugs coming into Europe while he was at the Dutch jails but from the sound of it in these triple cat A Dutch jails they're not going to be controlling much at all or be No you, aren't, you didn't, didn't do it in there it was when they uh, downgraded him Okay then he was able to get the There was no chance of thinking Yeah that's what I was and thinking Then triple cat A was unbelievably controlled every minute every movement you made we they gave you work to do and it was a strip of plastic about a metre long and you put the clips on it you know for the curtains and then you have to do that every day or you, if you didn't do that you couldn't go to the gym so it was, you had to do it and then they'd let you go to the gym but they, they had the, the rooms upstairs for the thing they, they had little walkways where they could walk behind so they had a brick wall where they, they, they all already had the toughened glass so they could double see you through the double sided but they had little runways and one day they brought us some coffee and we've seen them, and as they've opened the, the hatch a little bit too much, I've looked down the hallway, and the other lad sat there doing his thing, he's waiting for me to bring his tea. And I've seen them there, even though the video in it, there was, there was a, a screw stood there in headphones, recording it, and writing down things, even though it was all recorded, so it was really properly strict. And when, when they moved, because uh, I, I was there, the first year was, I was in the, uh, in the, concentration camp side of it and the what they wanted to do they built another prison so when, when your visitors come they, they go into the normal prison go through the, the normal search system then they put you in a van put your visitors in a van and drive you around for about 20 minutes to confuse you and they did that when the uh, when they moved us from the old prison because well, at the time obviously we didn't know but this is when they built the ultra modern Triple K with three pieces of bulletproof glass, three sheets times three on everywhere that you went. It was unbelievable. We've never seen the sun for well, nearly five years. The, the, the roof was about 50 foot tall and it had the netting over the top of it and bars and grills so the birds couldn't get down, but it meant you didn't get any sunshine. And the, 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 the walls were so high and that was inside the prison. So even when they brought your visitors in, they drove them around the prison grounds to confuse them. And then so when, it's horrific. Yeah, and then when they moved us on the day that they moved us all into the, the new jail, they, they took us in the vans, it's the first time we knew about it, and they drove us about for a couple of hours, really, in the back of a van, all goggles on and masks on and everything. And the building was literally, you couldn't put a cigarette paper in between the, the old building and the, and the new building. It was next door. And then once we, we, they moved us in there, it was uh, everything was monitored, mm. everything, including your, your phone call. So no, no, it wasn't going to be running no. anything from those ones. No. So talk to me about when you got to obviously like so at the end of your uh, Dutch sentence. Then were you happy at the thought of being moved back? To, or was it, was it little to be happy about, or happy about no, being closer to it, home, it, or uh, relaxed conditions? That's five that? five years plus to, to think about it. So it's just something that was going to happen and. Yeah, you've come, you come to terms it. with it. Yeah, you've come to terms with it, just get on with it. Now, now you can do it. Mm. And then the, the, the day of the move was, was a, a straight, well, like I say, the, the end of the sentence came and I thought I was going to be moved back 
and instead I got one of the governors come in and said, uh, sorry mate, you're not going home, you've got to court tomorrow for extradition, even though I was being extradited that night, that following day. And uh, what the Dutch, uh, uh, what the English customs are putting in, put an extradition order in the day before, knowing that I wouldn't be extradited, I'd be taken to court to be extradited. Mm. That's where they got another 22 days out of me for nothing, because I, I never got it back in yeah. 22 days. So they then sent us back to this uh, the prison. I had to wait there then for them to pick me up, and it was a special branch who came in a private Royal Navy jet. I was flown from the, the prison in, uh, in Holland to the airport, straight into a private jet with the Scotland Yard and taken to, I think it was High Down Prison. Uh, got in there, put me on the wing, lasted about 20 minutes on the wing before they realised who it was. And then they all came, put us in the block and said, uh, I'm sorry, it was nice about it, I suppose. I'm sorry, Stephen, but this is uh, where you have to say until they move you to Whitehall. And that was done. I was, I was in uh, High Down Prison from Holland in an hour. Cell to cell. You were really getting the celebrity treatment. Yeah. And then, so um, from High Down, where, where then did you took get... her to Whitemore. Took you to Whitemore. Whitemore, Triple K. Yeah. Triple K. Yeah. And um, how long were you there for then? Uh, well, again, the same, same, similar story. But when I got there, there was only four prisons in there: me, Kenny Noy, Mickey Steele, and uh, uh, a Turkish like called Kana. And. Uh, was there for a couple of years, two, two years, eight months or something, mm. with them, and it was Kenny Noy who got that shut down. Okay. Because what what used to happen there, that that was, it wasn't as strict as the Dutch system, the, the English Triple K. It was as secure, but you had a bit more movement in, in the English one. We could cut together and was all out together, which had never happened in Holland. You was on your own all the time, apart from when you was in work. But when you was in work, you was fixed into a room. You don't come out of it. Whereas in England, it was a lot like that. And it was Kenny Noy who paid a lot of money again to get it shut down. And, yeah. he, and he got he got the Whitemore one shut down again through inhumane treatment to prisoners. Yes, because like, they, they was doing the same type of thing. Yes, yeah, so it's like a who's who of the criminal elite that you've uh, sort of been wrapped around. So talk to me about how you found, found Kenny then, what sort of fella he was. Yeah, Kenny was great. Just, say, just, just a lad off the street, really. Made tens or hundreds of millions, whatever he made, I don't know. But yeah, he was just a, he was a London lad, wasn't he? Yeah. But yeah, me and Kenny hit it off okay. I, I did the cooking, he did the chopping and veg up, and we cooked together for a thing uh, in Whitemore a couple of years there. And then when they moved us from Whitemore, because he moved all four of us out on the same day mm. from Whitemore to, and then we got downgraded double cat and uh, Kenny got put on the wing. I think Mickey Steele got put on the wing as well. And they moved me to uh, York, which is a normal cat prison, but they had a double cat situation inside it. Yeah, and um, what about, um, I need to ask about Mickey Steele then, like, what was Mickey like? Mickey was just uh, fighting his case all the time. And so obviously you must have some conversations with him. Not, and... not much really, no, no. Mickey kept himself to himself. Yeah, he's just, he just typing quiet. all the time. You could, you could hear him all night going through it. It's crazy because obviously he's still not been released but he could have been released if he admitted to it. Oh, all right, yeah. Because I've, he I've lost track of him. Yeah, because he hasn't admitted to it, um, the, his codies end up getting released in the last year or so. Right. Because he hasn't admitted to it, they won't admit to it, they won't release him as of yet. Um, right, okay. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was adamant it was nothing to do with him. Mm. Obviously you hear things, don't you? And everybody said it was, everybody said it wasn't, I, I don't know. So you've ended up getting moved then from the triple cat to a double cat then. So you double cat to, yeah, full sort of New York. And how is it there? So even slightly more relaxed, slightly better yeah, conditions? Yeah, even more, but still on, uh, not closed visits, but you still your visits are in a separate room to everybody else's visits. So your visitors come in, go through the normal search and thing, then they go to the next block and go through the same system again, another search system. Yeah. And then they get to see you. But you, you get... Uh, you, you can have two visitors and you, you sat close to each other, a little table in between, but you get a special visitor sat right next to you. Oh, the, the, the officer. Yeah. There's always one sat on the table with you. Terrific. And uh, he's sat there writing things down, but it's all recorded and videoed. And yeah. They still put one there. My God. And so by these times here, so had you, um, 
decided obviously you've been in the Dutch one for five years, we've moved back, done a couple of years in. The, at this point here, you, you decided, right, I'm done with the life of crime. Just, more, just, more, more or less, yeah, because I knew how long I had to go. And at that time, it was still up the two thirds time. Yeah. So I thought I had even longer to go. And it was that it was in Whitemore Triple Cat A that we uh, that the education came over, and I got my first grant for my first year of my degree. Fantastic. In, in there. And so this was this through the Open University at Art degree, was this? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And so there was no temptation then, obviously, once you got a little bit more freedom, you're around set so inmates to try and sort of broker any deals. Like I said, you had. The contacts that people would and days was old. Yeah, the contacts that ninety nine percent of the criminal world need. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, you'd no interest. Well, in no, nobody could come and visit me anyway. You know, for seven eight years, even as the, when we was double K, nobody had ever come. But you couldn't work still between had... the inmates. You couldn't somehow work. Yeah, there. but then you trusting people you don't know. So, but it was over in my mind. I knew what I was wanted, and I knew where I was going with, with, with the art, even when I was on the run. I was thinking about, you know, if I get caught, which I, I was, th I was always thinking about, that I would do that. I'd go through the art and, and get as far as I could, could with it, mm. because I was always told that I had a little bit of talent, even when I was young, with it. And then once you start doing a degree, you learn all the techniques and everything for it. So. Yeah. But it's also a mental thing that gets you through that system. But you've also got to think about all the rubbish that they put in front of you to stop doing that. You know, there was, there was more people against me doing it than there was for me doing it, guards-wise and staff-wise and governor-wise. You know, they didn't, they didn't want people in a, in a maximum security prison like that moving about with paints and brushes and things like that. You know, I had to fight all the time. Every time, if you move prison, it was only, only moved twice. But they take you off education, then you have to battle. You know what it's like, you have to battle to get back on it. That's why a seven year course, it should have took seven years because you're only allowed to do one course a year. So that, that gave me the, 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 the six year gave me the first degree and then the extra year gave me the with, with honours for, for the degree. Congratulations. Well, that, that, yeah, thanks. But that, that took, took on another six, another two years because of all the times in between trying to get on education and people not even bothered that you're not getting your, your, your education. Well, in full Sutton, we, there was about 100 people on education out of 5,000. So they, they, didn't any, yeah, they didn't put any uh, emphasis on things. If anything, they tried to distract you. Because when, when you go to education in full Sutton, you go through the full airport security system, put everything that you've got through the, uh, the detection things, and they pat you down. And I was walking through with, with boxes of paints and brushes and you know, stuff like that, they didn't, and they had to search it and put it through every mm. time. And that was two, three, four times a day. So they was always trying to get me off the classes, and a couple of times I had to fight, and uh, not fight physically, fight to get back on the, the classes. Yeah. But that, that takes away six months, you know, that you're off the, the class for a bit, and any mistakes, any, any bits of arguments, and you're off the class. So you've always got a battle to keep getting on it. Mm. You know, it's not. It's not a system that works to rehabilitate people. It's a system that works to make sure you come back again. Yeah. You know, the, the, the more you're fighting in there, the, the harder it becomes. Mm. And so, you end up doing 11 years when you got back to this country then. It's incredible, so you did five years previously, or over five years in Holland, then to yeah. come back and serve 11 years is, and to be the same as you are today, it's just fantastic, and that was your artwork got you through that artwork and, and fitness gym gymnasium yes yeah, so there's never smoking weed or anything like this in no, the no, no. Never no. Into that. i was uh what was it oh, yeah e even in holland in the closed prison we got drug tested every yeah. week you, you're not allowed to smoke weed in the dutch gyms. no 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 no, no. It's, it's, it's illegal every week we got a drug test when i came back to england got drug tested every week yeah you know, and the, the only thing they can test for really is cannabis. Yeah, of course, you, the others are out in two days, aren't they? Yeah, it's out in two days, it's gone. But like I said, you were never one for, even while you spent all the time in Holland those years in Holland, you weren't one for smoking a joint or taking any cocaine or anything like this? No, not away from you, no. Not when you were in Colombia, you wouldn't sample anything? No, definitely not there, no. No. The thing, you know, early early days when I was in, in Holland, you used to smoke a bit of weed now and again. But once it started to get 
complicated and big, then you can't be going on these drug deals with smashed out of your head. Yeah, you need a uh, clean, clean, clean head all the time because one mistake can not only lead to, to your death, but other people's deaths. You know, in your heyday as such, then, so you're not partying, you're not doing drugs and stuff like that. You know, between 93 and 96, what was the end goal then? What was your plan on doing then? You're planning on making millions to doing what with this money? Yeah. Well, being able to stay out of prison. Just go live get a life. Well, I, I was planning summer. to go to South America and live there. What, live in a mansion out there or villa out yeah. there to do your art all day? Yeah. And that was me. Well, yeah, go there and uh, probably never come back to England. Mm. Yeah. Um, foolish plan, really, but well, you know, it was, it was a dream that I had at the time. It's been in Colombia doing art, doesn't sound in a really doesn't sound no, too bad. being on the wrong team, yeah. the way of achievement was maybe the slightly yeah, wrong way to go about it. Yeah. Feel free to download the full podcast on all major streaming sites, including iTunes. Apple Music and Spotify. Also, check out the KRN store and grab yourself the latest KRN merchandise and accessories using the keyword KRN10 for 10% discount on all purchases. Thanks for listening and enjoy the interview. And so, while you're in uh, England, you've worked your way through the system, I'm guessing, down to the, did you get, end up in the Cap D by the time you got released? No, I got to Cap B. You never got no, no Cap B? No, we refused Cap C and Cap D completely. So these, well, I'd had two escapes by then. Of so. course, but these were years earlier. You see, yeah, it's a long time earlier. Uh, yeah. By the time you ended up getting released, were you a reformed? Yeah, yeah. You were a reformed. I've done character. every course that they could ever think of. Uh, the the couple of weeks before I got released, uh, that's when I, I won the uh, Costle Prize. I won the Platinum Prize and the, the Bronze Prize Incredible. for thingy at twenty seven thousand entrance. Incredible. Uh, the, the picture called it "What if Jesus came back?" Yeah, and it was in inside the prison, so I put quite a few prisons in it. Yeah, we get that to come up on the screen. Je- Jesus in cuffs and uh, the security guards filming him, and that that won the cost of prize. Uh, sold it to uh, Timsons for five hundred quid, I think. Fantastic. I've gutted that I sold that. Yeah, I just wish it a little bit. So yeah. you've ended up. Um, you were like slightly different from most people having served 16 years in jail because you have something so positive and something that you could now use to support yourself in the art mm. work. But it must have been an incredible shock coming out to the world after 16 years. The world must have changed. Unbelievable, unbelievable change. The technology had gone through the roof. Yeah. When I left Manchester, I, I remember got working on uh, on a computer, Sinclair. Yeah, so you got, sorry to interrupt you, so you got nicked in 96 and you end up getting released in 2011. Is that, yeah. Oh my God. One time. Oh my God. So you, see, you you know the technology that had come about from then. But well, everything had changed. The whole of Manchester had changed. I kept getting lost mm. in the old town. They, they built the M60. I wasn't even there before. So did you, um, Obviously, I guess anyone's going to be really institutionalised after 16 years in the system. Um, did you find it hard being out and about in public or yeah. busy places and stuff? How long did that I, time I too? still find it hard. Yeah. Now, still find it hard. I've been into London today and, yeah. uh, you know, I feel a lot better when I get out and I'm going to, out into the countryside. Yes. You know the 16 years you did, did you do it, uh, did you have cellmates or any point? During no. the did you, yeah, so it was all single bang up for single 16 all years. Yeah. And so how do you find... Um, have you got a partner today? Or? And so how do you find living with people? Well, that... I don't live. I just have a partner now. Yeah. You know. uh, I don't think I could anymore. I don't think I could live with somebody. We'll, we'll see in the future, but at the moment, I'm happy living where I am and seeing somebody now and again and, and just working, really. Mm. And so um, talk to me about the sort of state of your life today then, and obviously what you've been up to obviously in the last 10 years, just been concentrating on your artwork. Obviously no one's... Painting all the time. You know, like I say, you've not done any interviews until um, no, a couple there, of weeks ago. There, so there, there's one of the main reasons for that was, you know, like I said before, that I, I didn't want to be a, a prisoner, an ex-prisoner, who was just telling people about what I was doing in prison. Yeah. I wanted to be somebody that could say, well, you know, you go to prison, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. You can study, you can get yourself fit and keep yourself fit. You can get proper qualifications. I mean, when I came out, we went down to a Buckinghamshire University to pick my degree up. You know, that was a, a great day with my family. Of course, fantastic, too. Uh, and you don't have to go down, you don't have to be taking drugs in prison, what's the point? Yeah. You know, everybody, a lot of people do it. 
but you, you have got, they do give you the opportunity. You might have to fight for it, but it's there, and you can take it. And you can also, uh, you know, for me, I knew because I was selling my paintings in prison. I mean, I wasn't getting fortunes for it, and some of them were selling for tubs of protein and stuff like that, you know, to keep me going through the gym. And, and so, um, how about the state of your relationships today then with your family? Like you said, you mentioned uh, prior to the interview that you've got a son. Um, two sons. Two sons. And how's your My relationship? granddad now. Congratulations. Yeah. And so, are you involved in your grandchildren's life and your son's well, uh, life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's freshly, it's only a couple of months old. So, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and like, my so son was here yesterday. And they must be incredibly proud of you, their turnaround, and obviously over the last 10 years, not to go back to a life of crime. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not many criminals end up getting away from it, really, when they've been as deep no. as what you have. You, you, they'll never get away with it unless you educate them. You know, for, for me, the education of it, because I did other courses in there as well, music, did uh, up to grade eight in the Royal College of Art, of music as well, music theatre. Fantastic. Uh, and what what instrument was that in the music theory? In or? music theory, yeah, about yeah. writing music and thing, yeah, yeah. and then was in the band in in uh, full song. Band doing what? Yeah. Singing or playing? Playing guitar. Playing guitar. Uh, yeah, I, start, I started off as a lead guitarist. Yeah. And then uh, I, I turned around one day and there's, there's another bloke stood in the corner, who was a, a, a great guitarist, and I became the the rhythm guitar. Fantastic. And then somebody else came in who was even better than the first one. He was a virtuoso guitarist, a Venezuelan lad called Larez. And he was a proper virtuoso guitarist, and I ended up on bass. So it was started, all started on the top and worked my way down in the back. Times in it, Joe. It like no, no. Especially when once it got to Loudon Grange. Loudon Grange for me was like getting bail. Yeah, it was unbelievable. But it's Private an incredible jail. story of like the skills you've learned in there. Like I say, you're already an artist, but you've ended up concerned that you've done degrees yeah, in, in, in there. You've ended up yeah. getting to grade eight in music, which is yeah. incredible. I did uh, up to grade five when I was a kid. Yeah, the, the grade, up to grade five was okay. That. Of Se course. Then it Six, seven, and eight difficult. was three hour uh, uh, le uh, exams. It was difficult. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, this is um, should be an inspiration for anyone who's yeah, end, well, end up in the system yeah. or if any of the boys in the system who are watching this on their phones or anything like this. Yeah. Please don't take no education or learn something. Put down the drugs, yeah. especially if it's spicy smoking or anything like this. Yeah. Put it down and start learning, especially if you've got a bigger sentence and you can get onto the Open University stuff. Yeah. Make use of it. You haven't got to pay for it, have you? No, no. Well, so, if you think about it, my, my degree outside, well, what did it cost these days? 60 grand? And so for what a degree? It, what it, the, chance, the thing is, you'd have had to support yourself throughout that process. You wouldn't have been able to throw it into yourself, yeah. into it as much as what you did. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely incredible, Stephen. And uh, so, so guys, um, like I said, we've mentioned his artwork the whole way through. Stephen is absolutely incredible at art. And um, please go to Stephen's website, which is Stephen Me Art is Stephen Me Art. Yeah. Stephen Me Art is dot com. P H um, for the Stephen as well. Yeah. And please go to his website and check out his work. Maybe try and buy some of his work or support him. Get in touch with him and support someone who's really turned his life around um, mm. over the last ten years. I'd like to sort of commend you on what you've done and the fact that you have. Thank you. And you haven't resorted back or been mm. tempted during because life throws in hurdles along the way. Oh, lots of hurdles. Yeah. And. Um, when these hurdles come up, it's easy to get sidetracked or think, fuck it, and yeah, yeah. end up resorting back to our ways, even in eight. You, you have to look at it in the, in the long thing. It was two years before I bought a car, before I could get a car. But I didn't even buy a car. I got a car because I painted somebody's uh, architectural ceiling for them. I took, mm. took the car as a payment. I was riding my bike everywhere. Mm. You've got to readjust your life. Fantastic. Especially the life I was leading before it. Mm, it's fantastic. Um, and so, about your life today. So you are happy in your life today, then, with all your grandchildren, your children in your life. Yeah. Uh, you've got a partner, you say. Yeah. And so life's good. Life's great at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And so, talk Getting to me about your plans over the next few years, then, Stephen. Especially with your art. Well, with the art, we've got a show in Brick Lane soon, in September, in a, in a gallery on Brick Lane in London, and then we'll just see where that goes from there. Mm. Just keep showing. I've been. I've done a few shows over the past few years. Done the NEC and things like. That. You just got to keep going and keep trying, mm. and keep trying to produce what people want as well. But you know, for for anybody who thinks they're an artist in prison, carry on doing it. Make paintings that you can sell when you get out. 
You I'm do, sorry, I did. You do get some of the most incredible, incredible artists, artists ever in prison. In prison. Yeah. It's, um, incredible. Unbelievable. And um, talking about your obviously former friend you haven't seen for a while, Curtis, his fortune's obviously been horrific. Terrible. Right. Terrible. If you th think about what, what they've done to Curtis, he's now sat in a, a, a cat A prison yeah. for a fine. That's, that's all he's in for now. But you know um, at the point where they talk about uh, how much money and how he controlled this and that while he was in the Dutch prison, obviously you, didn't, you haven't had any contact with him since no. that one passing fleet. But someone who had made the money that he's reputed to make or the papers to make, why would he do this little jersey deal? No, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the jersey deal. But but surely he didn't have the money he had, he wouldn't have done that otherwise. No, I didn't ever believe that he had the money because you know, they, they hear about the, the 400, 500 kilo, but then they need to chop that in half straight away. Yeah. Half it goes back to them. And then you've got 10, 20 people involved in it. And yeah, so you don't he, end up with Like I say, even with the, like you, millions. you can see it through common sense, even with someone who's, uh, Obviously, the prices that the drugs go for in Jersey, you're not going to be interested in a little weed deal if you've got all these hundreds of no. millions. And especially after you've just served however long in jail. And then, so then it's like a added thing that they've ended up then giving him a £198 million confiscation. Yeah. Because obviously, again, if he's doing the little Jersey deal, this guy hasn't got hundreds of millions, surely. So. It's not, he's not got hundreds of millions. He's never had hundreds of millions. It's just all fantasy fiction figures then. And like you say, I mean, People like you and Curtis, you see that if you climb to the very top of the criminal world and look at the amount of jail time that you guys have yeah. had to. So, and it's, it's not worth it for a second, no. surely. And well, think, of the life think about like Curtis now. How long has he been in now? Yeah, he's coming up to with, with the other things that he's done, thirty years. It was ninety six, so he's been in there. Yeah. Tw tw he's served twenty five years continuously. Yeah. Plus his other previous sentences. Of course, you know, so exactly. over thirty years in prison for what? At the end of it, he's, he, you've missed a life that you'll never get back, obviously you only get one. And you blink and you turn around and 15, 20 years have gone by and it's been in prison. You know, I look at all my friends and, and quite a lot of them have done really well. A few millionaires mixed in there, but all through working. Mm. Going to work every day, knuckling down and doing what everybody does. You know, there's a few entrepreneurs in there as well, but even the ones who have got just jobs where they go every day and they're just paid. It's done a lot better than I have. Yeah. When I look at it, I've got no house, I've got nothing. I've got no yeah. pension. I've got no pot of gold hid away somewhere. I've got nothing. Apart from me, the art and, oh, and, you, and me, me everyday blessed, living. You're in a blessed position to have the yeah. art and now that you're starting yeah. to put yourself out there, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit more demand for your art, fingers yeah. crossed, down the line. Um, so talk to me about where can people reach out to you other than the website? Are you on social medias? Are you, are you on Facebook? Yeah, I've got all, it's, it's all linked through the, the website. Uh, yeah. Everything's on there. What, oh, and anybody licks on, uh, goes onto the website. Yeah. Social media links there and everything. And uh, are there any other topics that we haven't covered that you would like to cover, or is there anything that you'd like to add today, Stephen? No, I'll just just try. You know, learn some. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over again. You know, it's just pointless. And life runs out pretty quickly. I'm 62 now. Mm. You know, there's not there's not many years left. There will be because I keep fit. Yeah. Um, you a, look great for your age, I must say. Well, I'm a practicing vegan. Now I don't eat any meats or animal products. And how long's that been? For? Uh, over a year now. A couple of years of vegetarian, and mm. I, then I had a little heart attack through being a vegetarian. Not through being a vegetarian, but eating too many eggs and cheese, replacing the meat. You know, thingy. But since then, I've been. Uh, I got on my bike. And how's your, health, how's your health today then? Oh, it's great. Yeah. So your heart's in. Yeah, I did about 120 kilometres last week. Jesus Six, Sixty walking and the rest on my bike. But uh, yeah. It's Keep fantastic. Fun. Held game of golf now and again. Fantastic. Well, hopefully we can have a game of golf yeah. at some point uh, down the line. So, um, guys, like I said before, please support Stephen and the incredible things he's done. And um, lastly, to leave it on, anyone who's stupid enough to go get into the life of crime, um, especially when they're hearing about other oh, cartels and all this, and you can become a millionaire overnight, what would you say to them, Stephen? Don't do it, because very few make it to be a millionaire overnight. And I mean very few. And the ones that do, by the time you get to that level, uh, there's perhaps hundreds of police looking after you, looking to try and catch you. Yeah, what and sort of life is it? What sort of life is it? It's terrible. Mm. All the time, you know, I, I wake up in the mornings and I walk out and this morning, like I say, I'm, I'm in the middle of a forest at the moment and six o'clock this morning I'm going for a walk, you know, because I can. You know, that, that just that simple thing. It doesn't seem much to a lot of people, but 
No, it's a lot to be able to do that. I'm not really look behind you all the time and worry to, about to, things. To all these people that haven't been locked up for 20 odd years, they can't appreciate it, but I'm guessing that no. freedom's worth more than millions behind bars. All of it. I'll, I'll change it all tomorrow if it went back, because you're not just missing out on that, you're missing out on your family. Yeah. You're missing out on so many things. Yes, you know, you when you're in prison locked up, you, you've lost all your chances of doing things. You know, you're never going to meet somebody walking down the street. Or you're never going to meet somebody at a dinner party, you know, who could change your life. You know, when you're out here, you can mingle with people and perhaps meet somebody who could change your life for the, for the better. Absolutely. And so, um, finally, is there anyone uh, that you'd like to give a shout out to anyone for their support or your friends that have sort of helped you over the Family. Life? Family and friends, you know, the people, you know, keep strong with your family. They're the only ones who are going to support you. I mean, I, I had a, quite a few friends who supported me financially and sent mm. money in and things like that. You know, straight members. Mm. But you, that's only a few. Really, when you've got a prison, you've got a prison on your own. Yeah. It's so only your family who support you. Sure, after a year or two where you'd like to yeah. see, when you meet people in there, they've been in there for a couple of years, they can't get hold of no one. No one said it. No, 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 you get lost, you know, especially especially your criminal friends. Yeah. You know, they, they sort of just drift away completely. Yeah. And it, you, you're left with your family. I mean, my family, I put them through hell, traveling all over Europe, visiting me and things like that, you know. Mm. Having to have special orders to come and visit me in prison, but, you know, and having police come round to their house to, to look round the house and to make sure it's that person in front of them, you know, when you get to a certain level. Yeah, it's terrible stuff that you put your family through as criminals, family quite too, selfish. Yeah. Um, very selfish, yeah. And so, um, that's it. this is, I'm just an avid reader, especially of true crime, and your story is more insane than any of these books I've read. Like, when's the book going to come out? You got it's, any I'm well on with it at the moment. Yeah, it'll be, I'm hoping, i say less than a year, it'll be done. Well, I look forward to reading it, and hopefully, um, we could do some stuff down the line and when the book comes out maybe we could do another interview talking about the book in order to market yeah. it and sort of help you yeah. and uh, like I said hopefully there's going to be other stuff down the line with Stephen's artwork um, so like I said Stephen I'd like to say a huge thank you today a huge thank you for the opportunity yeah. and to let me obviously do this it's uh, been much appreciated and hopefully yeah. it can sort of when people hear that like I said you climb to the, the right the top that no one literally less than 1% we're ever going to get to meet in the cartels, dealing with them on a face-to-face -face thing, and yeah. look where it led you. Well, where um, it ends up, you know. I think it always ends up like this eventually. Yeah. Unle unless you're in that other level, like the, the Dutch ERT affair, where it's police and customs involved in it, Yeah. and they're dealing with it. But, but unfortunately, people from the streets aren't no, going to get there. That's uh, no. beyond. So, um, like I said, thank you very much. Much appreciate the time. It's been fantastic, and I know everyone's been absolutely... Love this. Okay. Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you, Christian.